<laughs> DNC Chair Jamie Harrison joins us now. Good morning, Chairman. Good morning, Stephanie. How are you? Uh, well, you know, we just... <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I, I know, I know. You know, that guy is obsessed with testicles. And yes! He, wasn't he just recently, I, I saw some clip where he, he was saying how uh, over the, the past 50 or 60 years, men's genitalia yes, has yes. shrunk. Mm-hmm. I mean, somebody needs to just give him a hug or something like that. <laughs> I think I, I think some personal some personal hang-ups that he he really needs to deal with. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to leave that right there with the chairman of the Democratic (laughs) Party. (laughs) I have a lot of other jokes I could do. Oh, yeah. I have to tell you, I went to Rowan County, a very red county, where my mom's uh, nursing home is, and, you know, saw a guy, big Trump, you know, sign on a guy's house with the Tea Party flag. I saw a guy with, you know, big Trump hat on, and I, I just thought, you know, I wonder if you sometimes lose hope that we're ever going to get over this tribalism or they're ever going to get out of this cult. I mean, I felt like saying it's two years after the election. Why do you have a guy's name mm-hmm. <laughs> on your hat or your house? Right. You know, it, it's it's a bit daunting at time. And, and there, there are times in which your hope wavers. Um, but, you know, when I come back home and I get grounded and, and I look in, in the eyes of my of my boys, I recognize that I can't lose hope because of them. I, I have to I have to find it from some way and 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 grow it. And and that's why I work as hard as I do to try to uh, to make sure that the future is brighter for them because it, it it is a great concern. I mean, you see the things that are happening in our society. Uh, you see yet again another horrific shooting uh, take place in, in Texas, uh, and, in and, and Buffalo and other places. And, uh, you just know that you, we can't sit on the sidelines. We can't be silent. We can't let hate win. Yeah. Um, and so it's time uh, to get it's loud well, it's mm-hmm. down our efforts. Yes. Yeah. It's time, it's not, not time for thoughts and prayers, time to get louder. I mean, you, I saved two tweets oh. for you, chairman, cause they, they gave me hope because I do think we need that. Cause that's part of voter suppression is making people lose hope that we can do anything That's or exactly we can change. Right. Um, Dr. And- Annie Andrews tweeted, when you lose the moms, you lose elections. Thoughts and prayers, GOP. Uh, Corey said, I've never seen a Democratic president cheered in a small town in Texas and also vehemently, uh, who vehemently booed at the sitting Republican governor. I, I feel like more Americans, you know, even born out in the polling, are getting it. They get which party is stopping us from having sensible gun laws. They get, um, you know, I, I, again, moms. That, that, you can't tell me this mom rushed in and saved her two kids after she, you know, got out of her handcuffs that the cop, the 19 cops who sat there and did nothing for an hour it had put on her. You know, I mean, it, it's something, it feels like something is happening that's different, is it? Well, it's, it's I think the American people are, are, are saying, listen, <laughs> You know, we put our hope in, in these institutions and in, in these individuals to, to have the best interest for us and our families. But you know what? It, that means we got to put the hope and, and the responsibility on ourselves, and that's what we're going to do. And I think that's what fe- people are feeling right now. You know, I just saw an image the, the other day. I was on social media, and, and there was this um, somebody posted something about this man that was standing in front of the schoolhouse and uh, one of the moms called and asked, well, who's this this strange man? And apparently it was a dad who had said that I'm going to volunteer uh, to the school district to stand in front of the schoolhouse because that that's what I have to do in order to protect my babies who are in the school. I mean, more and more of us are feeling as though we have to do something because you get these politicians like the governor uh, in Texas, uh, like Senator Cruz, who are just failing us. I mean, Senator Cruz's uh, response to what happened in Texas was, well, we need one door in and one door out. What the hell is that? (laughs) Yes, it's a a fire trap. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it is crazy. So you are so scared of the gun lobby. You are so scared uh, of the NRA that you can't fathom to say, you know what, maybe we need to change something with guns in, in this country. Uh, yeah. Maybe we, you know, an 18 year old doesn't need to have access to something when he can't buy a handgun, but he can buy an AK-15. Or, uh, 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 I mean, uh, uh, one of these assault rifles. I mean, come on. 
I mean, I take heart when David Hogg tweeted, mark my words, this time will be different. And I don't know whether it's the confluence of how many times and it, we're at a tipping point or it's a, you know, perfect storm. But I do think this story, you know, you tweeted about what everybody's talking <coughs> about. Stories like this breaking through. An 11-year-old had to smear her classmates' blood over herself and pretend to be dead. And you said in the McCarthy GOP talking point is this, we simply have to reduce doors. I mean, these stories are breaking through, I think, after Uvalde. I mean, I think it's... Um, and also, here's, here's another, you know, they always try to cast Democrats as weak on crime. Republicans are the tough on crime party. Well, most of our crime is committed with guns. GOP is the one stopping us. from Police organizations, even in Texas, said no to all these gun laws that, that Abbott pushed through. So, I mean, is that not an issue we can take back in these midterms as well? It, it is an issue, Stephanie, and and one of the things they say that oh they support the GOP supports the police departments. Well, hell, if you support the police departments, then you also understand that police don't want to have to deal with these folks who are dealing with these huge assault weapons, right? Yeah. They they don't want to 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 risk their lives for for uh, dealing with you know when somebody can mow down thirty people and and. 15 seconds. And Uvalde is right? the perfect example of that, where the 19 armed policemen no. couldn't do anything about one 18-year-old until the elite border squad that's used to exchanging gunfire with cartels got there. And 19 kids were already dead. I mean, I... I yeah, well, I mean, it, this, yeah. this is the thing that... This is the classic GOP uh, thing. You know, they say, well, you can't politicize this. You know, let's do hopes and prayers and let's not politicize it. And we'll come up with good solutions like, uh, you know, reducing the number of doors in, in a building. And, and that is how we're going to save kids. No, it's not. And what they want the American people to do is to forget. They want folks to move on with their lives, to forget about the pain, to forget about the anguish, to forget about the, the, uh, the 21 people who lost their lives, the 19 kids who lost their lives, who will never uh, see another birthday, who will never uh, get to go to a graduation party, who will never graduate from college, who will never uh, get to have their own kids of their own. Yeah. And that's what they want people to forget. But, folks, we cannot forget. We cannot be silent. We have to constantly remind them that we don't forget this. And this is just not an isolated thing. It's not just the guns, but it's also women's rights to control their own bodies. It's our voting rights. It is a full frontal <coughs> assault on who we are as a people. And we can't forget. And the power that we have is yeah, protests are good. But bottom line is, folks, these people need to get the hell out of office. Mm -hmm. And the only way that they get the hell out of office is that we vote them out. Yep. The only way to get judges who will actually understand the anguish that American people are going is to get people in office who will appoint judges who will understand that. Yeah. You, well, you said once again, the Senate GOP standing in the way from common sense gun reform to women's rights to voting rights. They blocked an obstructed positive change. We must pick up seats in the Senate. Um, you know, I think it was Sheldon Whitehouse said the other day, we only actually need like four or five. That's eminently doable, isn't it? That's Between, it. you know, Ohio and uh, um, Tim Ryan, Val Demings in Florida. I mean, we have a lot of great candidates. Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, North Carolina, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, you know, Missouri's picking up a, as a possibility. I mean, there are a lot of great candidates, Iowa, uh, across this country. So, you know, I know people, We yes, we got to get loud. Uh, we, we can, <clears throat> excuse me, we can get angry, but folks, bottom line is this, if we don't vote, if we don't vote them the hell out, then all of that is just wasted emotion. All of it is just wasted emotion because they will continue to do the same damn thing. Mm -hmm. And so the only way that you change it is that you show them your political muscle. You show them that the, 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 the power isn't in the lobby, the power isn't in the contributions, the power is in the people, and the people need to show up. Yeah. If the 80 million people who showed up for Joe Biden showed up again in November, folks, things will, a sea change will happen in this country. Yep. A sea change. I, can I just so say just quickly, speaking of our great candidates, Let's talk about Herschel Walker for a minute. Herschel, Herschel oh, okay. Walker's solution to school shootings involves a department that can look at young men that's looking at women that's looking at social media. 
You just said this man needs serious help, and the GOP know this, but they don't care. They just want power. They don't care that he abused his spouse, threatened police, held a loaded gun to his head. They don't care that he's clueless on policy. Um, show them you care. Support Reverend Warnock. I had a chance to meet Reverend Warnock and listen to him speak in person recently. I, you could not find a, hun- a person 180 degrees from Herschel Walker that is in every way. I, intelligent, well-spoken, you know, a, a reverend that is a, an amazing senator, right? Yep. I mean, uh, Reverend God. Warnock, is, is, I mean, <laughs> it, 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 night and day doesn't even uh, describe the difference between Warnock and, and Herschel Walker. Yeah. Herschel Walker needs some help. Yeah. And, I, and this is not me being political. Yeah. I mean, you just take a look at the man. You take a look at the things he has done over the past few years. You hear him now. He is not all there. He yeah. needs some some professional help. But the Republican Party, it's not that they uh, they don't see it. They do see it. Yeah. What they want is they want a body in a seat that they can control so that they can have the power. And it would not surprise me is, you know, they, they get him in, they try to get him in there and then they force him to resign and then they appoint somebody else mm-hmm. who else they can control. Yeah. I mean, but Herschel Walker does not have the best interests of the people of Georgia in mind. No. And I and, and I personally care about it because my mom lives in Georgia, my stepdad lives in Georgia, my niece and nephew, my, my sister, my uncles, they all live in, in Georgia. And I tell you what, I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that this man does not represent them in the United States Senate. Somebody who will put a gun to their own head? Yep. Seriously? Yeah. <laughs>